Hey guys, this is Jeff. I just thought I'd share a little short video with you on uh, my progress on my PV project. And uh, it's moving along a little bit. Run into a few issues that's uh, eating up some time. These are three of the inverters, three of the five inverters that I'm going to be installing. Uh, yesterday, I shared a picture with you that had an inverter installed in this position right here using flex. But um, I decided to change that and went with conduit. And there was a couple reasons for that. One, the flex is narrower on the end than EMT. And it wouldn't allow me to put the number eight wire into the inverter. So I changed it out to um, the EMT, they both half inch, but the inside diameter of the EMT is a little bit bigger than the inside diameter of the half inch non-metallic flex. So that's gonna help me out there. These uh, PC, PVC boxes here that's housing the breakers <laughs> a little light flimsy thing. I probably wouldn't use that again uh, if I was doing this over because it's presented a few challenges that I wasn't expecting. Number one challenge that this cover depth of this box, I checked the depth of the box with the depth of my inverter so I could put my PV sitting my pipes in. But it turns out that the cover itself is part of that depth. Which that makes this part narrower than the inverter bottom. So I've got, unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to suppress my OCD and live with this. It's either that or buy all new boxes and I'm just not gonna do that. These are the, are the three breaker panels that'll be in this building. That's all the, all the breaker panels that'll be on the inside. There'll be one on the outside and also a transfer switch. But the incoming power will come in here to this breaker. It will feed through, run this trough, and then come up into each one of these disconnect boxes. And this would be the incoming power from the utility that will go to the inverter. And then on the output, which would be the back terminals, I'll come into this disconnect. I'll feed out back around into this box here. So each inverter will have a 40 amp breaker. That's what I've decided to use with 40s. I originally were going to use 50s which is what the manufacturer recommended, but I'm gonna use 40s. Uh, so each inverter will have a feed from the utility and also an output from the inverter. And this will be my output panel. These inverters put out 240 volts with no neutral. So that's the way the Europeans uh, they have 240, they don't have 120, 240, they just have 240, and they normally ground one of the legs of the 240, which is not the way we do it over here. So in order to generate that neutral, I had a couple schemes of doing it, and I watched a lot of YouTube videos of people with recommendations, and I tried to implement uh, a form of those, but the more I studied it, the more I didn't like it, I thought there were some potential problems with it, significant problems. So 
I'm going to use this transformer, which added about a little over $2,000 to the cost of my project, but that's neither here nor there. So I will come in with 240 into this, this panel. I'll feed out of the top of this breaker. I might actually modify this breaker panel to accept this square D shunt trip breaker. Well, I say I did, I had one of my guys do it for me. From this breaker, out of the line side, I'm gonna feed out, power this transformer. And then on the secondary side of the transformer, I will derive my neutral, it's what's called a separately derived neutral. And it will come up and feed into this panel here. So here I will have line one, line two, and neutral. Here I will have line one, line two, but no neutral. And this will be isolated from this with the transformer. So when I pick up my neutral from the transformer here, from the transformer to come into here, I'll also ground this neutral to the grounding conductor or the, uh, yeah, the, to the ground wire. I think there's the right term for that. I'm probably not saying that right. It's not the grounded conductor, but it's gonna be bonded to the ground. Uh, there won't be a neutral in this box. And then from here, I'll feed out to the transfer switch that's gonna be mounted on the outside. I don't have it up yet. And then from the transfer switch, I'll move over to my automatic transfer switch, which the generator supply. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I'll fill you in. Oh, I don't have these other two up because I didn't get enough of these put together. Uh, I thought I had enough for the whole thing, but I didn't. There's five per unit. Um, I've only got 15. Gotta have 10 more. So probably next Friday or so before I can put those up. Then maybe we start doing some wiring here. But I do have a couple other things to go in. I gotta put this transformer in place. Gotta get the hose through the back of the wire way to go out to the incoming power panel and back out to the uh, transfer switch. I also gotta get the uh, solar array circuits in, which I'll have a box below this. All those circuits will come in and then come up in this trough and then they will come to this DC breaker right here. And it's important if you're doing this that you distinguish between your AC and your DC breakers because they're not the same. This is an AC breaker, a DC breaker. And this is a, a an SPD, which is a surge protective device. So the solar array is gonna be mounted out in the field. The wire's gonna run in. I'm coming in with bigger wire. I'm gonna have a, a terminal box here. And then I'll reduce down to the smaller wire. Come in here, jump over to the SPD, and then up to the PV input. The other breaker here will be the battery breaker. And the battery banks will sit along this wall here. Uh, these lithium iron phosphate batteries they will feed in here and then ultimately come up and connect here now it wasn't necessary to actually put these two breakers the ac breakers in because i've got ac breakers that'll be over here but since i had to put the box in anyway i wanted to to have the disconnects for the battery and for the pv handy uh, I decided to just go ahead and add a, some disconnects here. That way from this spot here, I can isolate any of the inverters. This breaker here, which is uh, going to be the output panel for my inverters is a shut trip breaker. And I modified this panel by adding this breaker uh, I was originally going to use a protective scheme for an auto transformer generated neutral which I decided not to do but 
I'm gonna hook this up to an emergency shutdown switch that I'm gonna mount on the outside of this container. That way, if uh, for some reason there's a problem inside here uh, and I need to shut all the power going out of this building off, I can do it right here with a button on the outside. Push the button, this breaker will trip and any any power coming out of this building will be off. So that's the plan, that's where I'm at. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.